Have you ever finished reading a book and just been like, whoa, that was such a good book. And then like a week later, your friend asks you about it and you can't even remember like the main points. Unfortunately, this is actually pretty common. Most people only remember about 10% of what they read. And because our brains don't hold information like that very well, it's important that we build a system to kind of help our brain out as it were. Hi there friends, welcome back to the channel where we focus on creativity, productivity, and making the best possible versions of ourselves. This video is gonna be split up into three different sections. Uh, number one is why this is important, why you should be doing it. Number two is the system that I personally use. And then number three is taking that system and making it work for you and modifying it to your specific needs. Why should you be doing this? We're not gonna spend just a whole lot of time here because if you clicked on this video, you probably already want to remember more of what you read. I will briefly touch though on how it has changed me and the way that I read now. One specific area that I really noticed is that I'm way more apt to share how I feel about a certain book or join a conversation about a book because now all of my notes are all in one place. So if I'm talking with my friend, I can whip it out and be like, yo, here's like exactly what I learned from it. It's also so much easier to begin a project because you're not always starting from scratch. You have all this stored up information that you kind of pull from to get your project started versus sitting down with a blank sheet of paper and having to just mentally grind it out. Now let's talk about the system that I personally use and I've kind of alluded to what that is, but the best way that I've found to more effectively remember what I'm reading is to take notes of what I am reading. But taking notes isn't supposed to be boring and monotonous and <laughs> slow and all this other stuff. Like with the correct system, you can still retain speed, retention, and most importantly, the enjoyment of the book. So here's what you'll need for this system. Obviously you'll need something to write on. Uh, I personally use Notion, but you can use any note taking app or simply a pen and paper. The other really, really important thing is having a book stand. You can buy these for like less than $10 on Amazon, or you can do like a quick little DIY and actually make your own out of a metal clothes hanger, which is what I did. So like I said, this is the system that I personally use. So I'm just going to walk you through what that looks like for me. And then later on, we'll discuss how to make that system work better for you. Before I even begin reading the book, I always take time to sit down and analyze like how much of that book I actually want to remember. Because you know, if it's a productivity book, I want to remember like as much as humanly possible. But if it's like a fantasy book, like it's like, you know, I still want to remember it and have some mental joggers uh, to look back on, but like, I don't want to re retain all of it. And then before I even begin reading, I always flip through the chapter and get kind of a brief overview, glance over the headlines. It takes like 30 seconds uh, and it gives me a feel of what to expect. Now I used to take notes as I would go, but I found that this really slowed me down and caused a massive break in concentration. So instead I actually read through the whole chapter and make notes on what I want to come back and write down later. And I make those notes by simply underlining or highlighting. Now, I know a lot of people are not gonna wanna do that to their books as well. So a little bit later on, we'll discuss how you can also take notes or make marks without actually leaving permanent things in your book. Now, after I finish the chapter, I take a minute to recall what I read and anything that I can remember that stood out to me, I write it down. It's very important to do that before flipping back through to all the places you've marked because it really tests your uh, retention. When this is done, I flip back to the beginning of the chapter, put it in my book holder, and then flip through the whole chapter, making my notes in Notion. Now, what about books that I don't wanna remember like absolutely everything about? For this, I use the Notion template made by by Ali Abdal. I've made a few modifications to it, but basically it looks like this. And honestly, it really doesn't take much time to fill this out, maybe like three or four minutes, but it really forces your recall. And it also leaves some mental joggers for when you come back and look at it later. The book in three sentences, how I discovered it, who should read it, how the book has changed me, and my top three quotes. I put the link down below for Ali Abdal's website where he gives out that template. So you can actually use the exact same one. Now, when all that's said and done, I usually try to leave a schedule of when I want to come back and revisit my notes and refresh my memory. Depending on the book and how much I want to remember from it, that kind of determines how often I want to come back and, and revisit it. Usually uh, it can go anywhere from a week to you know a month. Now, how can we make this system work best for you? First of all, let's discuss the whole marking in the book because I know for a fact a lot of people don't or can't mark up their books, which is totally fine. Marking in it or highlighting it is probably the fastest, but it's not the only method. So let's discuss a few other ways that you could also do that. Another reason to flip through the chapter is because if it is a short chapter, uh, you can simply make mental notes or, or remember the page number that you wanna come back and revisit. And then when you're flipping back through the chapter, often those mental notes or those uh, mental pictures will jump out at you as you flip back through, see different headings, etc. The second way is to keep a notebook 
beside you while you're reading. And then whenever you find a place that you want to come back and revisit, simply write down the page number with a T, M, or B for top, middle, or bottom of the page. And then whenever you're done, you just go back through your list and go back to the places that you wanted to revisit. Another thing you can do is you can buy little tabs that are sticky on one side, and then you can stick those to the page that you want to remember. If you don't want to buy them, you can also take sticky notes and cut them up into like narrow little strips, which is also great because then you can actually write miniature little notes on those little sticky notes. And then on those little mini sticky notes that stick out, you can have like the topic that's covered and then you'll know where to find different topics in the book. It can look a little bit messy to do it that way, um, but it is pretty effective. So I know I shared a Notion template with you guys, but I know some people aren't comfortable using Notion. It does look a little bit daunting at first because it's a very powerful program. So if you decide to use a different app or, or something else, uh, you can at least copy down the questions that you want to revisit, like the you know top three quotes or like the book in three sentences, you know, things like that. And also your notes obviously don't have to be within Notion. It's just important to have them logged somewhere. But for those questions, I would highly recommend that you don't mentally answer them. At least write them down somewhere. Now this is very important for making the system work best for you. And that is don't simply copy exactly what I do. You can do that at first, but as you go, make sure you put your own spin on it and make the system work best for you and modify it and change it as you go. Uh, change up the questions, add questions, take them away. Like for example, those notion questions that I mentioned, you can change those questions up to make them more specific and require yourself to answer them after each chapter instead of at the end of the book. Definitely modify it and twist it around and, and yeah, kind of change it up as you go. The absolute best thing about this whole system is that it requires your subconscious to pay attention while you're reading. Having a benchmark like answering those questions at the end of the chapter, at the end of the book, by nature requires you to pay more attention. Now before I go, I just wanna simply remind you that a video like this actually takes around 10 to 15 hours to produce. So if you wanna help me farther along my goal of becoming a full-time YouTuber, uh, leaving a like or a comment actually goes a really, really long ways. Now for some final tips. First of all, stay organized. It's very easy to just smack everything down in any given order um, but the goal here is to make an enjoyable process an enjoyable system that encourages you to come back and revisit your notes and remember and retain what you have read and what you've learned if your notes are all over the place that's simply not gonna happen it's gonna be exhausting and take way too much mental capacity to review all those notes write down the chapter the header like page number all of that stuff so you know exactly where to find it if you want to go back and revisit it be very, very organized. I learned this the hard way, trust me. <laughs> the second thing is that when you take notes, make sure you write them in your own words. If you simply copy down what's in the book, it doesn't really show that you've ingested it and formed your own opinion on it. And the last and most important thing is have fun. Like the system isn't meant to drag you down or make reading boring or like, make you feel guilty whenever you haven't been implementing the system. Like the system is meant to work for you, not the other way around. Make it however you need to. You're in complete control of it and you have total authority to change it and do whatever you want to with it. Hopefully you see the value of recording all of this stuff though, because over time you'll build up a bank of just incredible information that you can pull from and search and just, it's all right there. So with that being said, gentlemen, stay creative and I'll see you in the next video.